Let's do problem eight. This check function problem. Okay, here we have a sine of a certain angle plus cosine of a certain angle. We need to find the ordering of these three numbers. First, we note that if uh, an angle theta is between zero and 90 degree, we will have both cosine and sine be positive numbers, okay? So here we have A, B, C are all positive numbers because we only have numbers uh, between zero and 90. So to compare these numbers, we just need to compare their squares. So we know that a square is equal to sine 25 plus cosine 25 square. So we have square terms, sine 25 square plus cosine 25 square. And plus this twice, sine 25, cosine 25, okay? And the B square equals sine 35, cosine 35 square. This is sine 35 square plus cosine 35 square plus twice, sine 35, cosine 35. So C square equals sine 75, cosine 75 square, sine 75 square, cosine 75 square, plus twice, sine uh, 75, cosine 75. Okay, so we need to recall to check identities. First, we know that for any theta sine square plus cosine square equals one. Okay, here, so we have a lot of ones. This is a one, this is also one, this is also one, okay? Next, we need to recall the double angle or half angle formula. That means twice sine theta, cosine theta, this equals sine of twice theta. So basically we can express these three squares as follows. The first square is one plus sine 50 degree. The second one is one plus sine 70 degree. And the third is one plus sine 150 degree. And then we need to compare these numbers. All right, it's convenient to put all numbers between zero and uh, 90 degree. So for the third one, sine of 150 is basically sine of 30. Okay, that's because we have the third identity sine theta equals sine 180 degree minus theta, okay? So to compare a square b square c square is essentially to compare sine 30 degree, sine 70 degree, and sine uh, 50 degree. We know sine function is increasing function from zero to 90 degree. We have uh, sine 30 degree is less than sine 50 degree is less than sine uh, 70 degree. So that means C square is less than A square is less than B square. And because A, B, C are all positive, this order is just the order of A, A B, C. So C less than A, less than B. So the answer should be D. Okay, problem nine, complex number problems. All right, here we have two complex numbers and the magnitude of Z1 is two and the magnitude of Z2 is one. The difference of Z1 to Z2 is given two plus two i and the imaginary part of this quotient is positive. 
we need to find this quotient. Okay, so let's draw this plane, complex plane. So I like to draw two circles. One, is, one has radius one, the other has radius two. Okay, the other has radius two. So Z1 is on a big circle, Z2 is on a smaller circle, but we have two Z2 also equals twice the magnitude of the Z2, which is two. So Z1 and the twice Z2 are on this big circle. We, we see that the difference is two plus two I. Let me draw this um, arrow corresponds, corresponding to this complex number. 2 plus 2i is basically this complex number. Both, X, uh, both rear part and both imaginary part are equal to 2. So this is equal to 2 plus 2i. Okay. Now we need to find two points on the big circle such that the difference is equal to this uh, this vector, this area, uh, arrow, this arrow, okay? There are basically two cases. So one is here, the other one is here. Okay, we have two cases. All right, so let's discuss these two cases. So uh, let, let me call this first case, this second case. Okay, for the first case, this corresponds to Z1 minus two Z2, okay? So Z1 corresponds to the, the head, at the head of this uh, vector. So Z1 is equal to two I. And here we have two Z2 equals minus two. That means Z2 equals minus one. That's the first case. And then let's calculate this quotient, Z1 over Z2 this equal to minus two i. So we see that the imaginary part of Z1 over Z2 in this case is uh, minus two, which is negative. So it's not valid because here we require this to be positive. So let's consider the case two. So in case two, Z1 equal, corresponds to the hat of this vector, which is equals to two. And a two Z2 corresponds to the pair of this vector, which equals minus two I. Okay, this vertical uh, axis corresponds to the imaginary part. So this actually equals two I, negative two I, okay? So here we solve Z2 equals minus I, and then Z1 over Z2 is two over minus I. And this can be simplified to, uh, 2i, and we, we just have this 2i, the imaginary part is two positive. So the second case is valid, the first case is invalid. So our answer should be 2i, which is a. All right, let's do problem 10. We put seven um, positive integers in the following three by three uh, uh, squares, okay? And the two numbers are already given, five and 19. So the requirement is that each row, each column, each diagonal add up to the same sum, okay? So of course, there's, there are a lot of freedoms. So let, let me try to fix some, box, some boxes here. For example, let me fix this number to be x. Of course, it's a positive integer. And then, um, it's still, enough, it's, it's still not enough to figure out other numbers. So let me add one more variable. Say, let me put this number to be y. Okay. Now we can do a lot of work here to figure out other boxes. 
For example, for this left corner, uh, because we have the third column equals 24 plus x. So the sum must be 24 plus x. And then let's look at this bottom, bottom row. So we, we can fig figure out this box, which must be uh, 24 plus x minus x minus y. So which is 24 minus y. Okay, it must be 24 minus y. And then we can figure out the center box because we use the sum of the diagonal line equal to 24 plus x. So we just have 24 plus x minus phi minus 24 minus y. So this box becomes x plus y minus phi because it, it comes from 24 plus x minus phi minus 24 minus y, which is x plus y uh, minus phi, okay? Right, now we can solve some other boxes. For example, the second row, the, the first column, we have uh, 24 plus x minus 19 minus x plus y minus phi. So it becomes 10 minus y. So this is 10 minus y. And then we can solve other, the, the rest two boxes. For example, the, 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 the first row, first column, this box, we have 24 plus x minus 24 minus y minus 10 minus y. So it equals x plus 2y uh, minus 10. So here is x plus 2y minus 10. Okay. And the last box, 24 plus x minus uh, x plus 2y minus 10 minus 5. This becomes 29 minus 2y. 29 minus 2y. Okay, so if you check, you will see that each row, each column add up to, add up to 24 plus x. That's no problem. But there's one more sum we should check. That's this, this diagonal. We should check this diagonal. Okay, this diagonal add up to x plus 2y minus 10 plus x plus y minus 5 plus x. The sum should be the same. That is 24 plus x. This gives us some, uh, some new equation. So this simplifies to 2x plus 3y equals 39. Okay. Now we want to uh, maximize this sum. So maximize, maximize the sum is equivalent to maximize x because the sum equals 24 plus x. If x is the largest possible value, the sum is the largest possible value. So let's see what, what's the largest possible x here. So first we know that um, 39 is not, it's all the numbers. So y cannot be zero. Y cannot be zero. So otherwise x is not integer. So we have two y not equal to zero. So if so, we should minimize y to maximize x. So the min, the minimum value of y should be one. If y is one, that implies two x equals thirty six. That implies x equals eighteen. So eighteen is the largest possible value for x. Max x, and then the max sum. is 24 plus the max x, which is 24 plus 18. So it is 42. So the largest possible value of the sum is 42, uh, which is B, right? Problem 11. So we have this um, a quadratic function. The graph is a problem. So let me sketch this uh, function in the uh, coordinate plane.
So if x equals zero, uh, the, the top is uh, 13 over two, which is the maximum value of this problem. And then we know this, this problem is symmetric with respect to y axis. So we just need to find the uh, x intercept. So uh, if y equals zero, we solve that x equals positive or negative square root of 13. So the intercept here is a positive. Okay, let me, let me draw this curve. So these points are negative, sorry. Negative root 13. Here is a positive root 13. It's origin, okay? This is roughly this uh, problem. Now, let's look at the requirements here. We, we consider certain interval from A to B, such that over this interval, the minimum value is 2A, the maximum value is 2b. All right, here, let's discuss the several cases by the sign of the a and b. So first, let's consider that both a and b are negative numbers, or a less equal to, um, less, less than b, less equal to zero, because a is less than b, right? So in this case, we will have only the left half, part of the left half of problem. So we see that the minimum value is obtained at x equals a, and the maximum value is obtained at y, x equals b. So we have minus a square over two plus 13 over two equals the minimum value, which is 2a. And then minus b square over two plus 13 over two equals the maximum value, which is 2b. And from here, uh, these two equations are the same, okay? We can solve these two numbers, a and b. And a is a smaller value, b is a larger value. So we will solve that a equals minus two minus square root of 17. And b is minus two plus square root of 17, okay? Because a and b are different, they have to be these two values. But this is not valid because here we have b is a positive number. So this is invalid because we require both a, b are non-positive. Okay, so this is invalid. So now let's discuss case two. a is less equal to zero, but b say is positive. Okay, b is positive. So in this case, this interval includes the value zero. That means the maximum value has to be 13 over two. Okay, this means uh, the maximum value of f is 13 over two. But 13 over two equals two b here. So we can solve the value of b is 13 over four, okay, 13 over four. And we see that 13 over four is a number less than root 13, okay? All right, now let's look at A. Because A is less equal to zero, we see that the minimum value is 2A. So the minimum value is, is non-positive, zero or negative. And this number has to be obtained at x equals a. Okay, uh, minimum f is less equal to zero. That means uh, a must be less than equal to negative root 13. Otherwise, everything is positive. So we have this requirement. Now, minimum of f is obtained at a which is negative a square over two plus 13 over two. This is simply two a, and this gives us the value of a, which is minus two minus 
root 17. And this works because A is negative. It satisfies all requirements. So this works. And we have the value of B equals 13 over 4 and the value of A equals uh, negative 2 minus 7, square root 17. All right, that's case 2. Finally, we need to discuss case 3. Both numbers of A and B are positive. That means on the positive part, this function is decreasing. Larger x gives smaller value. So we see that minimum f is equal to f of b and uh, maximum f is equal to f of a. Right, we got two equations. If you, if you ask, Substitute um, a, we got minus a squared over 2 plus 13 over 2. This is the maximum value, which is 2b. And okay. if we sub substitute um, b, so minus b squared over 2 plus 13 over 2, this is the minimum value. Minimum value equals 2a. Okay, let me call this equation 1, equation 2. I can do the following. I can do equation two minus equation one. We cancel this constant, 13 over two. And uh, this is basically one half of a squared minus b squared. Equals twice a minus b, right? We can solve following. Okay, this is basically one half a minus b, a plus b equals twice a minus b. And we can cancel this a minus b because they are not equal. So a minus b is not zero, we can cancel this term. And then we have a plus b is twice two, which is four, okay? And then we can express um, b equals four minus a and plug it into one, into the first equation. We solve minus a squared over two plus 13 over two equals twice, Four minus a. Okay. And then this is a quadratic equation. We can solve the value of a. So this helps us to get, let's see. Um, so from here, we see that we have a squared minus four a. So this is um, 16 minus 13, three plus three equal to zero. That implies A equals one or A equals three. So because the sum of A and B equals four, so if, if A equals one, we see that B equals three. If, B, if A equals three, we have B equals one, but we have the requirement that A is less than B. So the second case is invalid, but we have the first, first case valid. All right, that's all cases. Totally, we have two, two valid intervals. So the answer to this problem is C, two. All right, problem 12. So now we have a right triangle, ABC. Angle A is 90 degree. Okay, and then uh, AD is altitude on the hypotenuse. P is the midpoint of AD. And the BP intersect AC at point E. And we know AE equals three and the EC equals 12. We need to find the length of EF. So here EF is perpendicular to BC, right? Um, the idea is as follows. We extend the uh, side of BC to the side of A. Okay, and then we extend the FE to the direction of E. Suppose the intersection point is uh, Q, okay? So we know that triangle because AD 
and the QF are both perpendicular to BC. So AD is perpendicular to QF. And this implies triangle Okay, um, BAD, similar to triangle, QBF. Okay, and also like a triangle BAP, similar to triangle BQE, triangle uh, BPD, similar to triangle BEF. So uh, since AP, equals PD. So it's very clear we know that E is also the midpoint of uh, QF. QE equals EF. Okay. And then we see that angle QAC equals angle QFC equals 90 degree. So both angles here are 90 degree. So that means that means Q A F C are cyclic. That means they are on, on the same circle. So yeah, we can actually draw draw a, a second circle. It's okay if we don't draw it, but yeah, let me let me roughly show this circle. Okay. So we know that Q E times F E equals A E times E C. Two, uh, two chords intersect at E, the multiplication of EF and the EQ equals the multiplication of AE and EC. Okay, that's property uh, for the chords on circle. And now we know AE equals three, EC equals 12. So this three times 12 equals 36. And we, we know that QE equals EF. So the left hand side is basically EF square. So EF square equals 36. That means that means EF is just six. So six is the answer. Okay. This is like uh, method one. Okay. Now let me show you method two. Okay. Um, let me draw a picture here. Let me, let me still draw this picture. A, B, C, D, this is a P, this is E, here's F, okay? So here, uh, we use a different method. It's based on a theorem called the Menelaus theorem. Okay, here we consider that uh, we look at the triangle ABC. ABC is intersected by the line BE. Okay, so at E, P, and the extension of CD at B. Okay, so we have by many laws theorem that A. E over EC times CB over BD times DP over PA equals one, okay? We know AE over EC is three over 12. And CB over BD, let me put it here, and D, DP over PA is one over one because P is the midpoint of AD. 
So this equals one. That means CB over BD is equal to th uh, four. Okay, sorry, equal to four. So that means BD to DC is one, two, three. Okay. That's the ratio. Now, when we see this ratio, we should be able to solve the, uh, this right triangle. Remember that, okay, uh, let's do this. Triangle BAD is similar to triangle ADC. So we have the following ratios. BD over, uh, let me write clearly. BD over AD equals DA over DC equals BA over AC. Okay, that's the ratio of the corresponding uh, sides. Now we see that BD over DC is BD over AD times AD over DC, okay? And these two fractions are equal. These two are equal. Right? That's just uh, the here. So this also equals BA over AC squared, because each, each fraction equals BA over AC. And this equals one over three. That means, BA to AC is one to root three. So when you see this ratio, we know that this triangle is very special. Angle A is 90 degree, angle B is 60 degree, angle C is 30 degree, okay? Angle ABC is 60 degree, angle ACB is 30 degree. Okay, now we are able to solve all these side lines. For example, AB equals AC divided by root three, right? So it's uh, 15 divided by root three, root three. And then we know BD is just one half of AB, which is 15 over two root three. And then we have the length of AD. AD equals root three times BD which is 15 over two. All right, uh, the relation between EF and AD is very clear because triangle EFC is similar to triangle ADC. That means EF over AD is EC over AC. So EC over AC is 12 over 15. And then we solve that EF equals AD, sorry, EF equals AD times 12 over 15. So AD is 15 over two times 12, okay, 15, which is six. So a, um, EF is equal to six. We have two different approaches, um, okay? So the answer is six. All right, let's do problem 13. So we need to put the numbers one, two, three, four into the following 16 uh, squares such that each row has these four numbers. Each column also has these four numbers. And we need to find how many ways can we do that. All right, um, let's do this. Let's first fix uh, one row, the numbers in one row and one column. For example, I'd like to first determine the numbers in the first row. So it's totally free. So basically we have four factorial ways to do that for the first, uh, first row. So if, um, for example, let me just put like one, two, three, four. This is one way, right? And then we fix the first column. So for our first column, we already have one number. So we need to add three more numbers. They must be two, three, four in, in this case. So let me do two, three, four. So totally we have, uh, three factorial ways to do that. So basically we have this number equals 144. 
we have 144 ways to fill the numbers on the first row and the first column. Right. Suppose we are done with these six boxes. Now we need to, we need to consider the rest nine boxes. All right, um, notice that uh, the second row and the second column, second row and second column already have the number two. So we cannot have more twos. And now totally we have four twos. So these two, two other twos must be in this right corner. The other twos must be, the other two twos must be here. And these two twos cannot be on the same row or same column. So they must be on the diagonal lines. So there are two ways to put this two. So this is two, two. Okay, let me use more. Four, okay. So if we put two, we have the other way to put two, that's this way. Okay, that's this way. Um, okay, let's look at the first, uh, first part. So once we fix these two twos, uh, the other numbers will be uniquely determined. For example, um, let's look at this box. This box must be one, because uh, this box is either one or three. If we look at the, the fourth row, it must be one or three. But the third column al already has three, so this number must be one. And then we immediately can determine this number must be three here. Okay, all right. Similarly, this number must be one because it cannot be three. And this number must be, uh, this number must be three here. Okay, the, the second row fourth column must be three. All right, and then we see this box, the second row, the third column, this box must be four because we already have one, two, three. And the third row, second column must be four because if we look at the third, the third row, we already have one, two, three, so it must be four. And the last box here is clear, it must be one. So there's only one way to fill other numbers. If we already fix this, uh, this seven numbers and this two twos. So here, in this case, we have 144 ways to do that, okay? And now let's look at other arrangement of two. If we two is arranged in this diagonal, like the second picture, and we see that these two boxes must be one and a three. And there are basically two ways to put one and a three. So let me list all these cases. So here I'm, I'm, here I'm putting uh, one and a three on the fourth row. There are two ways to do that. Either um, one, three in this way or three, one. Now let's discuss these two cases. In the, in the first case, we see that we can determine this number, which must be, um, must be one, because if we look at the fourth row, fourth, row uh, fourth column, sorry, fourth column, this must be one. And then this equals one, we see that this number, okay, the second row, the third column must be uh, must be four because we cannot be three. It's either three or four because we already have two and one in the, in, in the second row. So, but this has to be four because we already have three. And then we know the second row, the second column must be three. And then the third row, second column must be four. And finally, we have this number must be one. So other numbers are uniquely uh, determined. Um, so the total ways, total number of ways is four factorial times three factorial uh, times one. It's, it's also 144, okay? And then let's look at the last picture. If we put three and one in this, in this way, in the, in the fourth, row, fourth row, then we must have this number, the second row, the fourth column must be three. It must be three, okay? And then we have the center uh, two by two, squares. All right, um, here we only need to fill these boxes by one and the four, okay, by one and four. For example, if we have one here, then here must be four, right? And here we must have uh, one and here we must have four, okay? But we can also fill this, this box by 
four. If it is four, I will put one here. And if it is one, I will put four here. And then I will put one here. So we have two ways to fill these two by two boxes. So in this case, we have four factorial times three factorial times two, which is 288. Okay, now we cover all, all possible ways to fill the, the numbers. Totally is 144 uh, times four, which is 576. So the answer is 576 E. All right, let's do problem 14. So we have a set of numbers. The set starts from the numbers one and four. And if A, B are two numbers in set, we can enlarge the set by adding number C. C is given by the formula A times B plus A plus B. All right, the question is to find now which of following number is contained in this enlarged set. All right, let's see what property of the numbers in the set do we have? So um, we consider the following. So C equals A times B plus A plus B. That means if we add one on both sides, it means C plus one equals AB plus A plus B plus one. That means C plus one equals A plus one times B plus one. Okay, so in other words, if we add one to each number in the set S, that means the new number will be a multiplication of the previous old number. So we consider the set So let me call this set just T, okay? T is S plus one. Okay, this means we collect all numbers S and then add one to each number. We, we consider this new set as T. So T starts from, okay, S start from one and four. So T start from one plus one and four plus one which is two and five. Okay. And then we, we, we uh, add new numbers by multiplications. For example, we add, we can add two times five, which is 10, and then keep doing this way. So let's see what properties does this uh, numbers have. So we consider uh, mod five. We can see the mod five. That's the, the remainder when these numbers are divided by five. So first we know that two, the remainder is two, is two when it's divided by five. And now five, the remainder is zero when this is divided by five. All right, if we add some new number, so we use these two numbers. So, so C for example, new number, is equal to two times zero, which is zero, mod five. In other words, if we add a new number, this number must be a multiple of five. Okay? So the remainder when this number divided by five could be two and zero, just, just two possibilities for, for numbers in T. All right, two is the only number that's not divisible by five. Our, all other numbers are divisible by five. So from here, we see that any number in S is either one or five K minus one. Because any number in T is either two or 
uh, 5k. So any number in S is either 1 or 5k minus 1. So in this way, we can um, exclude many cases. For example, it, could, it cannot be two, 2000, cannot be 2001, cannot be 2020. But we have two possible choices. That's 1,999 and 2,019. Because when we add one to these numbers, it will be a multiple of uh, five. All right. Now let's see. Uh, actually, the answer is 1,999. It cannot be 2,019. So the reason is as follows. If 2019 is in the set, then 2020, that's 2019 plus one. Then 2020 is in the set T, okay? It's in the set T. So when we add a new numbers, it's a multiplication of two older numbers, right? These two old numbers has two possibility. Either it's just two or it's a multiple of five, okay? If these two numbers, okay, uh, let me write down what I said. Any, okay, let's, See, let n be a new number in this in, in, set, uh, in set T. So there are two cases. Two cases. Either n equals two times some number that's multiple of k or, and it just, the, the multiplication of two numbers, each of them is a multiple of five. So maybe it's five K times five, say five J. Okay, we have only two cases, okay? Because the, the numbers in T is either two or a multiple of five. So we have these two cases. All right, so if, 2020 is in the set T, that means 2020, okay. If, if, it's, if the new number is 5K times 5J, that means this new number is a multiple of uh, 25. This is a multiple. So here we know that 2020, if suppose 2020 is in the set T, but we know 2020 is not a multiple of 25. So it, it must be generated by the, by the first case. So that means 20, 20 must be two times 5K. And here 5K is equal to uh, 1,010. Okay, 5K is 1,010. And uh, next, we, we see that, so this implies 1010 is also in, in the set of T, because it's some, some old number that's in, in the set of T, okay? Next, we, we know that 1010 must be generated by some other old numbers, okay? By some other old numbers. So, 1010 is not a multiple of uh, 25. That means 1010 must be generated by two times 505. That's the only possibility, right? Okay, from here we see that 505 must be this old number, T, okay? And because 25 is not, not a factor of 505. That implies 505 must be generated in the following way. Five times 
101. But this is not a value because we only have two cases to generate new number. Either this, this number is two times a, a number that's a multiple of five or it's, mul it's a multiplication of two numbers, each of them are a multiple of five. So this is not, this is not included. So this is invalid. Okay. That means we cannot have 2020 in the set of T or we cannot have 2019 in the set of T. So 2019 is not in S. Okay. And now let's see, uh, let's see 1999 is in the set. Let me clean. Clean. We have uh, 1999 is in S. That just means uh, 2000 is in, is in T. Okay, let's see how, how can we generate uh, this uh, 2000 in T. Because we have initially, in the set T, we initially we have two and a five. And from two and a five, we just multiplication, we got a 10, right? We get 10. And then we use two and a 10 to get 20 and the five and the 10 to get 50. Okay, these are new numbers. And then we, we use 20 and 50 to multiply the old numbers. For example, we can have 20 times two, which is 40. And uh, 50, times, 50 times two, which is 100 and uh, 10 times 20, which is 200. Okay. 50 times five is 250, and uh, 20 times uh, 50, which is 1000. Okay. These are new numbers in T. And next, we generate some new numbers from this old number. So here, uh, let me don't write every number. Let's try to see it's possible to generate uh, 2,000. So here we just use uh, 1,000 and a two. We can have uh, 2,000. So 2,000 is in T, that means 1,999 is in S. Okay, so I think this completes the whole argument. So the idea is to uh, consider the remainder when this is divided by, uh, divided by five, okay?